So a few thoughts on how God works in our world and in our lives during Christmas and during every day of our lives throughout history in the present moment and the future. So Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 to 17, verses that usually Christians will read a couple, two or three verses from, and then they'll skip the whole chapter. <laughs> it's, be, it's who begat who after who begat who begat who in the old King James Version, the generations of Jesus. But this chapter is a beautiful example, not only of God's love and light that comes shining through, but the Jewish artistry, literary artistry, in shaping this chapter to tell the story right from the beginning about the incredible grace and love of God. So, it's an R-rated story. It's why it, it probably never gets read in church or preached upon. It's R-rated, and I'm so thankful that it is because we live in an R-rated world, triple X world. And if, if the message of the gospel isn't any good in that, then what's the sense? So in these verses, and I encourage you to read the stories, you have to dig a little bit. You have to go into Joshua and Genesis and the book of Kings, but to read these stories. But there's four shady ladies in this chapter. And actually, let, let me just say right from the start, in the patriarchal society in which these women lived, they are more wise, powerful, strong, resourceful, and even holy in some ways than the men that took advantage of them and abused them. So in this chapter, and I don't have time to go into it all, but I'll just highlight it. We have Tamar. <laughs> so the line of Jesus flows through people like this. Tamar who had an incestuous relationship with her father-in-law, Judah. And you can read details about it in Genesis. And then the line flows through Rahab, who was a prostitute. And you can read about her story more in the book of Joshua. And then we have Ruth, and it's a story of seduction with King Boaz. And then finally, we have a woman. It's not, she's not even mentioned in chapter 1 because it's so difficult, I guess. Uriah's wife, and we know her as Bathsheba. And it's a story of King David's adultery with Bathsheba and also murder. These stories, I dare you to read them. They're R-rated, man. Um, they're amazing as you read through them. It's like, what is this doing in the Bible? Well, the Bible is a holy book, but it's also a human book, and they're all mixed together throughout. But the point I'm trying to get at is these are Jesus' relatives. These are his family. This is his line. This is the lineage. This is the heritage. Nothing, nothing, nothing hinders God in bringing light and life to the world, not even our R-rated or X-rated lives. So, the Bible often is used as a, a, a book of judgment, but it's a message of love. And love says that no matter what you've done, no matter how you have been. The love of God can transform any life and bring good, bring holiness out of it. Can transform any human pain and distortion and bring light and love. You see, Jesus lives out that pattern and shows us who and what God is about. 
that we are never too shady. We never have too much of a checkered past or a checkered present. Our lives, though R-rated or X-rated, not only sexually, but in whatever way that means, are shady lives. Shady people, here it is, there it comes. Shady people, shady lives, darkness, pain, distortion, whatever it is, cannot prevent God's light and love from breaking through as the trumpeter swans give testimony to as well this morning. Heralding, heralding tidings of good news and great joy, which is that in the shady lives, our lives, past, present, future, our checkered history, I'm saying it enough, nothing can hinder God's love from breaking through. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot, will not, and will never overcome it. God's light and love constantly breaking through. So in your shady life, in mine, in my life, and yours that are full of shadows and darkness, and dare we say even sin and missing the mark, nothing can prevent God from breaking through and loving us as we are. This is Emmanuel, God with us, in it, through it all. Thank you, God. So, until next time, may you live all the days of your life.